Welcome back. Today, I was at a local estate sale in New Bedford. I was there nice and early, but I was way behind on line anyways. But I ended up getting a few good things, although I did a kind of a bad mistake or a bad buy on one of the items. But it is what it is. I'm almost done editing. No housekeeping really today, except that if you don't know already, I put in chapters in the streaming bar. So you can jump to each section if you prefer, if there's one section you don't like, whatever. Skip ahead, you can see it there, easy to find. But you should always watch everything. There's, there's something to learn about everything. With that being said, grab yourself a drink and let's just see what I got. All right, let's do this. 50 times is a charm, right? That's what they say, huh? All right, let's just start with this one. The most expensive buy of the day. I paid $250 for this Scrimshaw whale tooth. Well, supposedly, and that's what I thought it was. And that's why I picked it up. Well, okay, first of all, what is Scrimshaw? So Scrimshaw is basically just the artwork created by whalers where they would engrave the byproducts of whales such as bones or cartilage and it's mostly made out of bones and teeth of sper sperm whales. In order to pass time out on the open oceans they would they would take the bones and teeth of the whales they had caught and they would uh, they would engrave them. Lettering, designs, whatever. Fill those engravings with ink or some other form of pigment. Authentic Scrimshaw is getting harder and harder to find and it's becoming quite rare to stumble upon them. They have a, such a high collector's value. I mean, some of the whale teeth go from thousand dollars to ten thousands of dollars depending on the market. And in 2017, a record was set where a whale tooth, a Scrimshaw whale tooth, was sold for $456,000. So given the demand and the, the collectability of these pieces of artwork, essentially. A lot of fakes and reproductions are circling the market. So I, as you can already see, or hear, there was a lot of red flags that if I just knew about it beforehand, I would not have bought this. But I bought it and I mean, as soon as I did just 10 minutes of research on this, I realized that, yeah, I probably did a mistake. I probably, this is probably fake. It's probably resin or some other polymer. That that's, that sucks. But there is two tests I'm gonna run on this to, to really put the nail in the coffin. And one is a black light test or a UV test. And the other thing is called a hot needle test. So let's just do the UV test first. If you saw episode number two, you saw that I got a real, I found a real chess set made of ivory. So I know this is ivory and I'm gonna run this black light on it in the dark. If it's real, I, this is real ivory, so this will light up. If this is real, it should light up the same way as this. So we'll see. Let's shut off the lights. All right, you see really well from the top camera here that this one is shining up a lot differently than the whale tooth. Yeah, yeah. And you really see from the side angle here, there you see how this ivory chest piece lights up really nice, but this whale tooth has a relatively dull look to it. So yeah, pretty sure this is fake. So there you can see that it's not lighting up like ivory should be. It's pretty much done for it, but there's one final test I want to do because I've, I've, I've read about it, I've heard about it, but I've never actually tried it on ivory. And that is the hot needle test. So let's fire it up. I couldn't find a needle. So I'm just gonna use the tip of one of my things here on my, on my little pocket knife. Turn it on. And let me say, it should, so if it's fake, it should smell like burning plastic. If it's real, if it's ivory, it should smell like burning bone. Okay. All 
All right, let's just heat it up. Heat up the tips. Oh, yeah. Nice little glow right away. All right, be quick. Put it. Stab it. It's smoking. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. This is def definitely fake. It's burning plastic. If you ever burnt any trash and you thrown some tr plastic onto it, you know the smell. And oh yeah, 100% not a whale tooth. I kind of knew it, but now I've now absolutely confirmed it. And ah, ah. So pretty shitty spending $250 on something that is not even a real thing. And the only one to blame, honestly, is me. There's nothing I can do about it. I'll just hang on to it as a, as a reminder to do some due diligence before I'm gonna buy something expensive. So, oh well, pretty shitty buy to start this episode off, but I got some other cool stuff coming. All right. Next up, I have a box of just random stuff. Sometimes it's just fun to dig through the house, find little knickknacks, things that catch your attention, throw it into a box, and you're gonna get a better deal that way. You throw a bunch of stuff into a box, you're gonna pay, I don't know what I paid for this, maybe I paid $20, no, I paid more than that. Probably like between $30 and $40 for this box, and there's some goodies in here. So let's just see what I got. Let's see, where should I put this? Scallop gram, because when I'm not doing this, the fun stuff, I scallop. Just a thing from a scallop shucking competition. Whatever, picked it up, thought it was cool. Probably won't open this box until I donate it away again. A Coca-Cola bottle opener. Screw it up on the wall like this and just open your drinks like that. I'm not a Coca-Cola collector at all. I just figured I'd pick it up, see if there's anything special about it. Maybe it's worth something. I didn't know. Nah, turns out, checked on eBay. It's not worth that much. Maybe I could get between 10 and $15 for it. So, whatever. I'll hang it up somewhere here in the studio and yeah, I'll get I'll get a use out of it. So that's good. The, oh yeah. These ones I really liked. Some old school safety razors. Ones from Gillette. And they're just pretty sweet because First of all, they have a nice weight to them and they're they're completely made out of steel. You just unscrew the top like this. You take out the old razor blade. I mean, you can buy them brand new nowadays and you just get a new one, put the new one in like this, pop it up like this. Oh. And you're ready to go, ready to have a shave. I'll, I'll try this. I'll see how good of a shave I can get. And yeah, whatever, picked up those. Oh yeah, three lighters here. And well, let's start with this one. This is just a flat lighter. I didn't know they were called flat lighters until I bought them and you can see why. Pretty flat. I was checking online if this was in a lot better condition, if this wasn't all worn out like this. I could probably get between 30 and $40 for this. Flint work, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna screw up the underside here and put some lighter fluid into it and see, see if I get a flame out of it. So I'll do that with this one. And these things, I've never seen anything like this. Like, look at them. Now they're pretty cool. push them up like this or down like that, and the hood goes off, you just light them like this. They're very popular online. Turns out 
one of them can sell for, I think I saw 70 bucks. I mean, damn, just the look of them. They're so sweet. Oh, shit. Oh, God damn it. Crap all over here. I don't know what was in there. Okay, so these were pretty cool. Look at this one, nice little compass, compass divider. Take it off. Sturdy made, I mean, it says, uh, it's made in New York. It's nice. And while I was looking at it, I realized that, well, first of all, I did, I took this out. I saw, whoa, you got two, two pins or two of those points. Then I realized you can take this out and here you have the, the nib. I think that's what this is called, the nib for, for ink. So you could sketch out your first drawing in, in pencil. And when you had your final, whatever ready, you would just switch the tips, dip it in some ink. Oh, let me just get, make sure I get the right hole. Pretty sweet, huh? If I, if I had this in high school, I would have rolled into geometry with with my inkwell, with my compass from, I don't know, 1901, and I would have done geometry. Instead of paying $8 for a brand new one, F no, come with this one. This is pretty cool. Da -da, da -da. Hey. See, all right, want to talk about stupid things I buy? I'll show you a stupid thing I saw I buy. Some glasses. I don't know why I bought them. I don't wear glasses. I think, I don't know. I just thought they were interesting in, <laughs> in terms of the shape of them and the, the thing around the air, but they sit really good on my head. They're not going anywhere. If I was going to climb a tree, I would use these just in case I fell down, but yeah, I don't know. If you need glasses, if you know someone who needs glasses, I got a pair right here. Oh, oh some of the stuff I buy sometimes, a little thing, a little ruler you can put down in your pocket of your shirt or whatever. You can measure things. Ah, shit doesn't work. What a shitty buy. I mean, this is not even accurate. It says a number on it. It's not even correct. So uh, I'm just going to throw this out. Yeah, that was a shitty buy, huh? And next stuff I got up is some silhouette art. Got George Washington right here. And I just picked it up because I, I didn't know much about it. I figured I'd do some research on it. Nothing special, I mean, this is how they used to do it back in the days, before photography, before photography, before photography came out, and you couldn't afford a painting done, a portrait done by you, you would have an artist, you would just sit up and he would look at your profile and he would cut out the shape, and, and then if you saw episode number four, if you saw that little part about the Mountain Dew I had, well, if I kept on, if I, I don't drink Mountain Dew, but if I drank Mountain Dew, then eventually, this is how I would look. <laughs> Signed by whoever made it in 2001. Don't know why I buy certain things sometimes, but oh, I mean, I paid what, $30 for the box? It's no big deal. Oh, this one though. I almost got a little heart attack when I s searched this one up online because pretty much the exact same one sold for $139, although it didn't say assortment E there, it said assortment drafting, drafting, I think. But basically it's just, it's filled up with, with pe pen nibs for fountain pens. And all different ones for whatever style you need. I'm gonna hang on to them because I have a pen, a fountain pen at home, and I'm gonna test it. I'll show that actually, I'll show that. I mean, sometimes old things like this come back into style again. Some people like that 
old way of doing certain things, whether it be whether it be shaving or or having a cool lighter. There's something about it when using that old old school technology. So I'll hang on to these bad boys. Get myself a nice, nice fountain pen. That would be sweet. Is that what it's called? Fountain pen? I hate when I speak out of my ass. Fountain pen. Yeah. Ah, uh, yeah. I think they're called fountain pens. Okay. Picked up some dice because I like dice and these, well, let's see if the dice have some camera shyness because when I was rolling it the other day, rolled it 30 times, 16 other times, I got double numbers equal. So I got two fours, I got two fives constantly. And there we go. Did that camera get it? I hope it did because I just rolled two fours again. So one out of two, yep, yeah, double one. We got double one here. I don't think, are they weighted? No, I don't think they're weighted because they're a little bit older, but they might just been worn or produced a certain way. So there's a higher chance they land on the same side. I don't know. See again, double, two. I got snake eyes here. Again, snake eyes, double five. So I think there's something with them because I don't know statistically, here we go, double two. I don't think I should be rolling that many equal. They should land like that. Actually, what I should do, I, should, I gotta find the ones that are rolling double. Oh, here I got, tri <laughs> here I got triple four, so that doesn't help me. Okay. Double fire. Let's just see if it, there, these two. Five. I mean, double one. Cool. But I'm not going to gamble with these because I might lose. Okay. Well. Just uh, nothing special print. It shows the a scene back in the whaling days of out there catching whale. You got a whale over in the corner here with a flag on it that's dead probably. Yeah, anyways, burning, they're burning the oil. I thought this was cool. So I got that. And the last thing I got in here, I saw there are four frames like this. And it, it looks really nice. I think it looks really nice. And it, they look, at first glance, they look like they're they're made with pencil. But, I mean, that I knew right away they weren't, because if you actually, if you see, if you see around the entire way, you see there's a hard cutoff line around the entire way. And that just, that's a telltale sign that that's not made of pencil or hand-drawn, it, it's a print. I thought the signature here was real. It looked real. When you look at it, it really does look real. I came home and I laid them all like this. And then you see, if you see right here, you see how perfectly they are, they're signed, they're, they're perfect. And then I did the final test. Whoa. If you go to yard sales or estate sales or whatever, you should get, just buy yourself a, a little magnifying glass for whatever. If you're into jewelry, uh, whatever, you, you just want to see see things, should get one. I don't care how young you are, whatever. Some of the things you, your eyes are not going to pick up on. And this signature here is a perfect example because, swear to God, you look at them and this looks like it's signed by a pencil. I mean you would 100% think that this is signed by a pencil, by hand. But if you look at it under a loop or a magnifying glass, and even, even this is hard to see. It 
when you go really you get the right angle the right light you're able to see these tiny tiny dots and that's a sign of a printer that printer has shot out the jet there so they're they're just a complete print but don't get me wrong that's why you should you should buy things that you think are cool because i like them anyways they're gonna look really nice and they have this old look to them the paper just looks really nice and we have harbor traffic the grand banks small craft and fisherman's haven all right cool so that was the box of all the goodies and You know, for $30, you're buying these things. And I mean, the whole box I probably paid $30, $40 for. Just, it's fun. It's a lot of fun. You, I, what gets me, it's you never know what you're gonna find. I mean, one day I'll find a real, like a real good deal. I'll find some real cool things. But until then, I got some, I got myself a bottle opener. That, that'll be nice too. I'll get a use out of that. I'm gonna try to, shave with an old school safety razor because I've never done that in my life so that'd be nice to do um, lighter whatever if anyone you need glasses let me know you're gonna get this pair for free first pair is on me and some dice and that's it okay let's see what do I have next now oh I got that other box of cool things. Well, I like it. Oh yeah, okay. I'm gonna blast through them real quick. So, but if you don't wanna look at some of the cool books, feel free to skip ahead, but you should always look at these books. A lot of whaling history and local history. Fill this box up. Again, probably paid I don't know, $40 for the box. And I got at least, I got at least 30 books in here. Well, maybe 20 books. So let's just see real quick. Okay, perfect. This is why I left my guard down, I think, because I saw all these whaling related stuff and I was in New Bedford, even a book on Scrimshaw. And I just assumed that, I don't know, I just assumed that it was real because of everything. I mean, there's no excuse. It wasn't real. Get over it, Morgan. But, oh, some cool stuff made a scrimshaw. Oh yeah, look, look at those things. These are pretty badass. Holy hell, anyways, these are the best of the buy. And let's start with this one. It is the journal of a whaler, of a crew member on a whaler. Two years in the Pacific and Arctic Oceans in China. And 306 out of 401. So, not that many in existence. The Long Harpoon. Nice looking book, actually, huh? That green looks really nice. And that gold lettering on the front and also on the spine looks awesome. But what I didn't know was that it was signed. This book is by Arthur C. Watson, and it's signed, Arthur C. Watson. So I got a signed copy. Final book, right here. So it's a book of 60 plates from drawings by Clifford Ashley. And then you see it right here, with an introduction by Franklin D. Roosevelt. And Again, I got two signed copies in this lot. It's signed by the artist who did all these drawings in here. Oh, and this edition is limited to 1,035 copies of which 1,000 are for sale. So there's only of this, at least of this edition, there's only 1,035 in existence originally. Pretty nice having a book where you know the amount of books printed and you have the signature. That's awesome. But, but what really what I thought was great was this introduction by FDR. And he has ties to Fairhaven in New Bedford. When he was a little boy, 
he his let's see um yeah when he was a little boy he used to spend time up in Fairhaven and in Bedford area I think his grandfather or his grandparents was from Fairhaven and so he wrote the introduction for this in 1929 oh yeah that, that's that's before he was president and that's pretty cool I mean FDR is a big deal when it comes to American presidents so I thought that was pretty neat <sighs> done with this box got a lot of really cool books in here a lot of local history a lot of whaling history I found this up in the attic I'm not gonna go through all of it because it's it's not that interesting but it's just a bunch of newspaper cutouts and all other things relevant to the local area. I mean, you got some, these are not pictures, they're just prints on some cardboard. I mean, these are pretty cool, but I'm not gonna bore you with it. But the coolest part about this thing was this person collected, I guess they used to do some kind of throwback pictures in the newspaper in the days and you would see a before picture then an after picture or like here for example you have Fairhaven High School in 1906 and then at the bottom here you have Fairhaven High School in 1966 same thing again you have this house used to be there on wherever street it was and then you have the house, what it, someone bought it, tore it down and turned it into a bank. Damn, this is one of the most shameful things I've ever seen. I mean, look at that house on top. Then it was sold and then, I don't know, a company bought it, knocked it down and built a bank of the Bank of Boston. Now that is a disgrace. Oh, it hurts my soul to see a house like that be a knockdown. Yeah, and it's just a bunch of these things. So, I want to try something. I want to try to go to these places and get a 2021 version. I think that would be really cool. Yeah, let's do that. All right, guys, so that's it. A lot of little sh stuff today, some stupid buys. I mean, that ruler didn't even work, so that was pretty shitty. And... Um, I like the books. That was my favorite. My, the two signed books. Hell yeah. Alright guys. Until next time. Stay timeless. Occupy Mars.